The Al Wakra Stadium, the first venue to be built for the 2022 World Cup in Qatar, is under construction. Eight years from now, the best football teams in the world will play in this stunning arena. So we're at the site of the Al Wakra Stadium, which is going to be a 40,000 seat arena for the World Cup designed by Zaha Hadid, the famous Iraqi British architect. It's extremely hot, extremely dusty. They've been working here for uh, three or four months now, and it, it, it doesn't feel like a place where you'd want to play football at all. It's, uh, there's a sandstorm blowing around us. Um, but uh, this is the ambition that Qatar have to turn places like this into international football arenas. Qatar's World Cup bosses have promised reform following an international outcry over conditions endured by migrant labourers. They granted us a tour of the Al Wakra workers' accommodation. They wanted to show us how things have changed. It was unlike anything we have seen in Qatar. Let me take you through the system. Uh, there's a worker welfare committee. They eat fresh, hot food. Uh, the place gets rice for them and they return back to work. Uh, Wi-Fi, they can communicate with their families, they can go on Skype. There's a food complaint register. You can complain about the food? You can complain about the food. So when they leave every day, yes. the cleaners come in? Yes. And when they come uh, back, it's all clean? Yes. Let me show you the rooms. Yeah, it's amazing. It's kind of slightly heartbreaking, actually. We would like the employees and the workers you know, to personalize their living space. This is house away from home. Yeah, it feels like a, it feels like a human being's home. You, you've, you must have been to some of the worst workers camps yourself yeah. and seen them. The ones that doesn't look like this. What do you feel when, you've, when you realize how you can create something like this and you see those places? Uh, there's work to be done. Having employees in accommodation like this do increase your productivity. So there is yeah. a return of investment as well. Yeah. Let, let me show you upstairs what the laundry looks like. Uh, he will wash. This is really all any kind of worker should, should expect on a construction project anywhere in the world. And when you compare this to the other camps that we've been to, it's upsetting to think that this is achievable and it's being ignored everywhere else. It's, um, yeah, it's quite something. Cheese plant on the stairs. It's like a home. <laughs> it's it's house away from home. Yeah. It seemed somehow too good to be true, and we came back the next day without our minders and spoke to some of the workers building the state-of-the-art venue. They told us another side of the story. Some of the men said they're being paid less than five pounds a day. According to Qatari law, it is illegal for an employer to keep a worker's passport. We also saw documents that showed one worker was paid overtime at just 45 pence per hour, and this in one of the richest countries in the world. Despite the quality of the accommodation, these workers who are building the first World Cup stadium are still subject to some of the most serious problems affecting Qatar's labour system. It is on these foundations that the World Cup is being built. But while arguments rage over the risks footballers will face playing in Qatar's extreme heat, migrant workers from Nepal are dying on the job in record numbers.